What is up guys, it is KikiZilla101 here yet again, and welcome back to Kiki and Coffee, the show where we casually talk about stuff and put in as minimal effort as possible while we drink coffee. So grab your coffee, tea, or other preferred beverage, and let's get straight into the video. So, we're going to start off immediately by taking a drink of our coffee today. Because uh, last time we barely drank any of it. It's off screen right now, but unfortunately, um, I put my uh, KikiZilla101 mug off to the side and... Uh, my sister found it and uh, she put it in the, the, the dishwasher so uh, I can't use it but I was trying to hide it from her so that she didn't uh, put it in the dishwasher so I could use it again today but I failed at that. Um, so yeah we're just gonna, um, today is gonna be really fun because um, I'm gonna try something new. I've been wanting to um, some, do some dinosaur documentary reviews before. Um, and I would really love to put more time into it and get some nice footage from it, but you know it's it's hard to get to rule like work around um, like fair use and stuff like that. So um, it's and also I just don't want to take too much time to make it. So I figured why not just try this out? I watched this last night. Um, yesterday is when I recorded the uh, first Geek and Coffee episode, um, and today I'm recording the second one. And last night I watched this, uh, I was too excited that I had to watch it, and I just took a bunch of notes because I figured, why the heck not, let's just talk, let's just do a Kiki and Coffee episode and just talk about when dinosaurs roamed America, and what makes it great, what its issues are, um, and why it's uh, my favorite dinosaur documentary and dinosaur production period. Um, but also we're going to give it a rating out of 10. We're just we're not going to make this too formulaic. We're just going to talk about all the things that I noted down here and then we're just going to uh, give it a rating out of 10 at the end. Um, and if you guys really like this, then we can do Walking with Dinosaurs next or something like that. Now let's start off with um, just kind of describing what uh, inspired this. Because clearly um, Jurassic Park came out, and then shortly after that, you know, at the end of that decade, we got um, Walking with Dinosaurs. And Walking with Dinosaurs was a huge hit, and it was the big thing that started, like, the dinosaur documentary renaissance, where we just had tons of dinosaur documentaries. And um, they were just constantly made because dinosaurs were big now. Um, even though Jurassic Park was a big hit, it was really Walking with Dinosaurs that made um, dinosaurs more of a mainstream um, production thing because um, Jurassic Park was a big series and the general public loved that but before not not a ton of um, like productions like this like lower end productions rather than a film are being made until Walking Dinosaurs came out and only a handful of them actually tried to full-on dive into the same category that Walking with Dinosaurs was where it's um, like actually just following the dinosaurs the whole time and it's not um, you know the, the, it's not a whole uh, documentary about scientists talking and then like three seconds of uh, dinosaur CGI animations um, this one and just a handful of other ones such as like Dinosaur Planet at the time um, those are the films uh, or the uh, productions that tried to mimic uh, what Walking with Dinosaurs was doing and so you can't you can't deny that this is a this is Discovery Channel's answer to Walking with Dinosaurs um, so they, that's what started this however we're gonna get into what makes it very very different than Walking with Dinosaurs um, first off we'll say that this is a movie this this is a movie this is not a um, there's there's a lot less screen time overall um, but this is a movie it does not have um, the six episodes that Walking with Dinosaurs has it just has one um, full-length uh, feature um, does it say the time here? Uh, I don't know how long it is. It's, it's around an hour and a half. Um, probably, uh, probably like an hour and 45 minutes. It's a, it's a decent, oh here, uh, it is exactly an hour and a half. There you go. Um, so this is an hour and a half long, um, and it's just one solid film. Now, let's get into my notes here. Um, it was extremely nicely paced. It was very well paced. It took its time. Um, whenever it had some moments of nature shots and stuff, it let the, the it let the cinematography breathe. It didn't have constant narration, and um, it just let the story breathe whenever it had to. It really was nicely paced, and I think um, uh, I think that a lot of these dinosaur documentaries are really terribly paced. Um, some things like Planet Dinosaur was not very well paced. Um, things like um, uh, what's it called? Uh, 
the dinosaur revolution wasn't too well paced but this is fantastically paced i think they did a very good job with the paste uh the pacing here um there was there is poor cgi with um the uh coelophysis and the triassic period scene at the very beginning of this i do have to say that the very first segment um the cgi is at its worst there um and i think it's because it's probably the shortest segment and it's the very first one that they put the least attention in that one the main thing is that the detail the models are actually quite detailed and the animations aren't too bad it's that the the cgi like the the actual dinosaur does not like meld into the background uh very well it definitely pops from the background you can tell it's an animated dinosaur there and I think all of the animals really have that issue um, the Rudiodon is pretty bad as well I think the Rudiodon might be the worst um, which is a um, archosaurian like crocodile the crocodile type thing crocodile um, and so th th that's definitely an issue at the very beginning that you can definitely tell that the, the CGI has not aged well um, on in that behalf um, the narrative is extremely clear. We have an extremely clear narrative. It's very focused. It keeps itself, um, uh, it, it never strays from its narrative. It, it tries to keep very focused on itself and uh, goes throughout. And the theme, obviously, with this, this film um, is that it's when dinosaurs roamed America. So we're following um, different places in America, different states, which I thought was really cool as a, a kid because these were all things that lived um, where I'm standing as, as a kid. And... Um, it was really cool just to see how dinosaurs existed back then and what our world looked like um, millions and millions of years ago. And it sticks to that theme. It never strays out of America or anything like that. It's very clear, uh, clear cut. Um, the uh, animation is a little inconsistent, um, especially at the beginning. There are some scenes where you can see like um, dinosaur bones breaking, like the necks would be held at awkward positions and um, sometimes their feet would kind of slide it, like with sauropods, if you really paid attention to their feet, um, their foot would touch the ground and then slide a little bit, so the animation wasn't, um, wasn't too well polished in some areas, it was a little inconsistent, and there was one pretty bad, um, scene for animation that I will talk about later, um, so that is something that I have to bring up. Um, the animation overall is a very well done, but it, it does have some things you can notice that it's not too well polished. Um, <clears throat> we also have... Um, oh, the Dilophosaurus is probably the best CGI in the whole film. The Dilophosaurus just fits into the background so well. It looks dry, it doesn't look smooth or silky like any of the other CGI dinosaurs you see in a bunch of other... Um, productions it was extremely well done and also has an amazing roar it is the most badass roar like ever it's just really an awesome animal and this this is what got me into dilophosaurus i never cared for dilophosaurus before and then i saw this and i fell in love with dilophosaurus dilophosaurus is a really super awesome and interesting animal um and that's another thing is that this this um this production actually focuses on a heavily ignored and abused section of paleontology uh, or just like time period that is not often shown in these kind of things which is the early jurassic and it's really a shame that the early jurassic is not given more attention because i really feel like it should be but it's it's not <laughs> Sorry, I'm taking my time because I just realized how long this video is. Um, I do think, at the very beginning of this video, I talked about my opinions on the new uh, Schleich and Sp Papospinosaurus figures. I think I'm going to just cut that out because it's not important to this video. So screw it. We're not going to talk about that. So if you wonder why there was a cut at the beginning of the video, that's why. I'm just going to cut that out. Um, anyways, animation bone breaking up. Um, yeah, so it focused on the, the early Jurassic period with the Dilophosaurus and stuff like that, so it's really cool because the early Jurassic is something we don't get to see very often in a lot of other documentaries, which is really cool. Um, uh, also, uh, there's uh, segments in this where we have scientists talking to the camera, um, and that's something you don't see in things like Dinosaur Planet and um, uh, Walking with Dinosaurs. Uh, but these scientist se segments are kept far and few between, and they're really well done and very important uh, Like uh, information is possessed there. It's just the minimum that you need to know. Um, and it, they don't overstay their welcome, and they know exactly when to use them. They come in at the perfect time. 
Um, so it's, I really love that. And it goes, the same thing goes for their x-ray scenes. There'd be these scenes where the dinosaurs would like freeze and then you'd zoom in on parts of the, the bones and stuff. But that's another issue is that sometimes the bones didn't quite line up with the um, actual animal's position, but that's just probably a limit of the technology at the time, I guess. Um, but they're, those are some pretty cool scenes. They know when to use those scenes when they're talking about the anatomy of the dinosaurs or the, the science behind them with the paleontologists. And it's really not distracting at all. And even as a kid, even as a kid, I hated listening to, to paleontologists. After walking, watching Walking with Dinosaurs, I initially, I mean, eventually I'd, go, I'd get up, um, I'd be okay with that kind of stuff. But initially, I hated watching documentaries where just scientists talked a bunch. And this one never bugged me as a kid, which I have, you have very little patience as a kid, and I adored this thing, and the, the scientist scenes never bugged me, in fact, I kind of like listening to what the scientists had to say. Um, okay, so there is a scene, here's the other scene where there's an animation problem, there was a Camarasaurus inside of the Jurassic scene, which was probably my favorite um, scene when, as a kid, to watch was my, the favorite segment was um, the Jurassic Morrison formation scene, um, I just thought that was always a fascinating uh, segment, I should say segment, um, but there's a scene in there where there's a Camarasaurus taking down a tree and it's like, like wiggling like this on the tree, and it, you can actually see that the tree's not touching it, like at all, and then the tree just falls over and it's, it's just really bad. That's probably the worst the animation has ever gotten in the whole production, but it's, a, it's not too bad because it's at a distance. Um, but, uh, yeah, and also the Dilophosaurus was like one of my favorite creatures um, out of this whole series when I was younger, um, with the Morrison formation being my favorite segment. Um, however, that has changed with um, me aging and watching it more recently. Um, there is a Dino reference, which is kind of cool because John Goodman is actually the narrator of this, which I think works perfectly. I actually didn't know about John Goodman. This is my first introduction to John Goodman, so it never really bugged me, and that might be biased. But even now that I know who he is, um, and I really love the dude, um, like whenever I was younger and I'd hear, I'd see him inside of um, other movies and I'd hear his voice, I'm like, that's the dude from Walking with Dino, or When Dinosaurs Walked America. And I, it was just really cool. But um, I think he does a really good job and he's not too distracting. Um, actually, in Hoops and Dino Man's review, I have to give him a shout out, he does a great job of reviewing this, this uh, uh, documentary. He mentions, um, I like the way he puts it, he says that um, he doesn't try to steal the show and overact and stuff like that, and I really agree because when I watched Dinosaur Planet, I hated that narrator with a passion. He was so, he just sounded so off, and then the, uh, there, there was a scene where this pterosaur flies down at um, Pod, the, the raptor, and he, the narrator's like, oh, get out of here, and like yells at it. It's like, oh, it was so bad. This is really good. The, the, the most you get like of kind of out of continuity is like a couple references here and there, and they feel okay. It feels all right because they don't really try to make you feel like they're purely immersing you inside of the, um, the uh, past like Walking with Dinosaurs does. It goes back and forth between present and past. Um, time and it's kind of bringing you on a journey and telling the story of dinosaurs when they roamed America. And there is a Dino reference in fact that John Goodman was playing inside of um, the Flintstones. Um, and he, they have an Apatosaurus and, it's like, and he's like, uh, this is Dino from the Flintstones. It's a really nice casual reference. Um, there is a, oh, oh, there's a great cast of very unique dinosaurs. This one showed off some of the most unique dinosaurs that I've seen in some of the some of these dinosaur documentaries, um, and it really showed off some stuff and introduced me to a lot of unique dinosaurs that I have not even heard of outside of this. There are, um, uh, for instance, uh, Zuni Ceratops. I was first introduced through this, and I had not heard of it ever since, and not shown off in anything else, not shown off in a figure at all. I think maybe Kayakosaurus was doing a figure or something like that. I remember seeing something very, very recently, but for most of my life, this was the only way I knew about Zuni Ceratops. It's actually on the back. Zuni Ceratops is right there. Um, so that's really cool. Also, Ceratosaurus. This was my first exposure to Ceratosaurus ever. Um, Jurassic World, I think, came out, uh, or um, Jurassic Park 3 came out the same year, um, but I didn't, uh, I, don't, I don't think I saw that. I think I saw this, actually I saw this after, but it never really said Ceratosaurus's name and it didn't look like a Ceratosaurus, but this was my first proper introduction to Ceratosaurus, and it's really cool because I feel like Ceratosaurus is actually a creature that's often overlooked in the Morrison Formation, which is really a shame because it's a very iconic one. 
Um, even in Walking with Dinosaurs, it ignored uh, Stratosaurus completely. And uh, Dinosaur Revolution also ignored Stratosaurus completely and didn't put it inside of its um, uh, Morrison segment. Well, technically it was in Portugal, but same same thing. And then also Nothernicus is another really unique one that they had in here, um, which is really cool with Therizinosaur. And I, I love how they just show it there and it's it's just it's just a very unique uh very unique animal and it was my first introduction to a therizinosaur period i didn't even see i saw this before i saw chased by dinosaurs with the um giant claw episode so my first introduction to therizinosaurs was this and i think that might have been the reason why i couldn't really buy into the fact that nigel marvin was didn't know that therizinosaurus was a herbivore because maybe i already knew i don't remember i just remember that i was kind of always sitting there and i was like dude it's got to be a herbivore or something like that um i remember when i was younger when i first watched it that's how i was acting to the screen um this is a extremely educational um, production. This is far more educational than Walking with Dinosaurs. Walking with Dinosaurs is not as educational as this is. This does a far better job. It also takes, it does do the anatomy segments, it does do the science segments, that kind of puts it ahead of uh, Walking with Dinosaurs, but Walking with Dinosaurs does not, is not as educational as this one. I, in fact, Walking with Dinosaurs is quite misleading. They misrepresent a lot of the dinosaurs and other prehistoric animals in there, and they do inaccurate representations, and they oversize uh, a couple different creatures, which is really a shame. Um, but this one is far more educational, and, and it, honestly, it feels like it knows what it's talking about more than Walking with Dinosaurs does. So if you're looking for something more educational, uh, this is your best bet, in my opinion. This is the best mix of educational um, and uh, just entertaining content and also most of what is in here actually still holds up today i think the most inaccurate design in that entire this entire production is just the quetzalcoatlus because it has more of like a big bulb of a crest rather than um a little tiny like um thin crest that's it that's the most inaccurate design they have in this um other than that everything's really well done um so i think this is a very educational production still very accurate designs um, I also think that there was this, this funny part in the um, early Cretaceous segment uh, with the raptors, the dromaeosaurs, um, that uh, the, the team like made a jab at Jurassic Park. It was kind of funny. It, they, uh, they said um, dromaeosaurs or raptor, like the way that John Goodman said raptor. It honestly sounds like they were making a jab at the fact that now everybody only calls dromaeosaurs by raptor because of Jurassic Park being very... Um, uh, doing a very poor job at educating the public on what dinosaurs actually were. Um, and so, <laughs> that's, I think that was kind of like a little jab at the fact that um, nobody really knows what raptors are actually like because Jurassic Park doesn't do a good job of representing their animals. Um, feathers are uh, present and... Uh, oh yeah, feathers are, are, are present actually. Yeah, and, and, um, on the Dromaeosaurs and the Silurosaurs and the, the Nothernicus all inside of the early Cretaceous segment, all of those have feathers on them. They even have, like, I think an Ornithomimus or a Struthiomimus um, in the uh, late Cretaceous segment in Hell Creek. And all of them, uh, all those guys have feathers on them. And they're so casually put in. The, the most you get in the entire production that talks about the fact that the dinosaurs have feathers on them is just when the narrator says they're closely related to birds. They never say feathers at all until in the behind the scenes they mention the feathers. And th this is one of the most um, uh, important um, uh, like educational points in this is that they actually added feathers and they just acted like it was nothing. They literally acted like it was nothing because it's fact. These dinosaurs had feathers. And so they treated it like fact. They didn't dwell on it. They didn't say, oh, you know, actually uh, feathers, dinosaurs had feathers. They didn't even have a scientist come in and talk about it. Nothing. Nothing at all until in the behind the scenes I saw a segment where they were saying that they were inspired by a Chinese dinosaur that was just discovered before this production came out. And um, it had feathers on it, so they added in feathers on certain dinosaurs and stuff like that. But it's really cool to see that they added feathers, and they just did not give a heck. Um, they just let let it in there, and um, uh, yeah. Um, characterizing scars on the the, the leader Dromaeosaurus and uh, Tyrannosaurus characters, so they did use some kind of characterization, which is kind of cool to help you identify certain characters, which is really cool that they did that. Um, the fire sometimes didn't look very good in the end of the segment of um, uh, 
the, Cretace the early Cretaceous segment, there's a fire, a forest fire that goes on, and sometimes it didn't look very convincing. There was a time where Anothonychus caught on fire, and like literally nothing in the whole forest was on fire, though all of a sudden this fire just comes out and burns Anothonychus. And the Dromaeosaurs idiotically just sit there and let the fire, it's, it's, it's just stupid. Some of that is just um, not that well done, but it's not too distracting because it's very brief, very brief. Um, I love how, uh, oh yeah, at the end of each segment, um, we follow up with each of the dinosaurs that we were introduced to in that segment. So each, in each segment, like early Cretaceous, late Cretaceous, all that stuff, um, we follow up on each creature. And um, mostly we're said, like, uh, the narrator will say, this creature evolves into this, or this one evolves into this, or this creature disappears. And sometimes it's a little inaccurate. Um, like, uh, it, they say the Allosaurus in particular disappeared. Um, but technically, the Allosaurus family lineage uh, evolved into Carcharodontosaurus, and there were some Allosauroids in the early Cretaceous. So that's a little false. But for the most part, it was really accurate. And it was really cool to just, like, give it a little round off, like, saying, like, this is what this animal does and blah 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 blah. Um, it's, that was really cool for them to do that. They just kind of um, caught up with all of the animals at each and the at the end of each segment. Um, and oh, the my new favorite segment is the late Cretaceous segment in this one. Um, the late Cretaceous segment is my new favorite one because. It is so artistically done. It is so beautifully artistic, and I love the representation of Tyrannosaurus inside of this one, which is really amazing. They did a great job with it. Um, and even the opening of it was really beautiful. It has this beautiful sunset and beautifully lit swamplands uh, or marshlands, and it had like these echoing roars through the distance of past dinosaurs that we've already met. Like Dilophosaurus's roar is one that we heard, and Ankyosaurus is one that I heard there. And so they showed, they had those kind of echoing throughout, so you could kind of remember, oh, the, the, the echoing past of dinosaurs has come to its climax. We're finally at the end here. And it was really artistically set up. And then we show off the T-Rex, and the T-Rex was done amazingly well. Um, they even do the uh, Nano Tyrannus is actually a juvenile Tyrannosaurus there, but they never mention Nano Tyrannus by name. They do the um, uh, family group hunting um, uh, interpretation of Tyrannosaurus, which is extremely interesting. And... Uh, very educational. Um, then uh, at this, it's at really at this point is when I was watching it last night, and I realized yes, this is a Walking with Dinosaurs clone, but it has turned into its com a completely different thing. This story is far better presented than Walking with Dinosaurs. I'm gonna be straight up and honest with you, okay? This one, and I'm more, and don't call me on nostalgia here, I watched Walking with Dinosaurs a full year, or at least, before I watched this. So if anything, I should be nostalgic towards Walking with Dinosaurs. This is a better told story, plain and simple. They may have done some better narr narratives with in particular, like, specific stories, but as the six-parter story, it does, this does a far more consistent and better job at telling a story of the dinosaurs lives and how they uh went out and they it was much more focused on a story um and the ending was fantastic the ending in this one was fantastic it made you feel sad that the dinosaurs were gone it felt like an appropriate ending walking with dinosaurs as a kid always felt made me feel empty inside and is why i jumped so much and i had to go and watch other documentaries like walking with beasts and stuff like that because i never felt satisfied it never felt like it actually ended um uh but uh, I think other Walking With productions did better, but Walking With Dinosaurs, the, the weakest episode, in my opinion, is actually the final episode. The Death of a Dynasty is the weakest episode, and it's also probably one of the least scientifically accurate episodes because it completely misrepresents what Hell Creek was like. It kind of represents it as a barren, waste, barren wasteland, but it wasn't. Um, now, also, um, inside of uh, the final sequence inside of this, there's some very poetic narration. That's when the poetic, poetic narration like comes to its its fullest there, and I really appreciate a lot of it. There was two lines in particular that really stuck with me. Um, there was a line where John Goodman, uh, we're looking at a forest and we're panning around, and it says, um, contrary to popular belief, um, life in the uh, late Cretaceous was uh, uh, days filled with boredom, I think is the way it went, um, which is really interesting because it made it feel a lot, it was kind of like, doing a reality check and making it feel more real and that these are actual animals rather than um, uh, just like m monster, movie monsters like in Jurassic Park or something. And then my favorite line is the very end. Um, at the very end we have this line 
um, well, not the, the last line, but one of the last lines, we have this shot of these Apatosaurus walking off into the sunset, and it, it, it says that it's unlikely that anything as, as huge or as captivating will ever pass this way again. And when I hear that, it like almost like gut punches me emotionally. It's because it's true. Nothing as fascinating or as beautiful as the dinosaurs will ever pass this way again, um, or not likely to. And uh, it's sad. It's really sad. And that the ending of this one perfectly made me feel satisfied and made me feel that dinosaurs were awesome and that this uh, it it rounded off. Uh, I think even the last line in this was um, when. Uh, uh, it was talking about some mammals and how like um, someday their son, their their kids will walk on the moon and they'll uh, look back at the time uh, when dinosaurs roamed America. So like it was just very poetic. I love this thing. I think it did an amazing, out, amazingly outstanding job at presenting the dinosaurs' history in America. It did a great job at educating you, and it just told a really good story and made a very satisfying ending. I think that this this production. While it has its flaws with animation, and it has some, um, um, some, like, inaccuracies, some minor ones, this is a fantastic production, and I cannot recommend you guys watch it enough. This one should be getting as much attention as Walking with Dinosaurs. They are both equally amazing shows for different reasons, um, but this one is my favorite because it personally works for me. I like the cinematography, or I mean, I like, I like the cinema, uh, cinema, the cinematic um, presentation of this one. I think this one's far more cinematic and tells a better story, in my opinion. And I like stories, so um, I think this one's fun. Um, I enjoy this one a lot more. I think it's a lot less boring than Walking with Dinosaurs. I think Walking with Dinosaurs has a lot of low moments where it's a little boring um, and drags out a, a, a bit. <laughs> I accidentally cussed there. Um, but, yes, uh, amazing, amazing, amazing production. We took our time talking about it on this one. But I want to wrap this up with uh, talking about uh, its final rating, which would be uh, a 9 out of 10. I was considering giving it an 8 out of 10, which would be a great, but I want to give this one a 9 out of 10, which means amazing. Yes, it loses that one point for its um, slightly inconsistent um, CGI and some weaker segments that have a little bit issues. Of issues, but overall, it's a fantastic production and absolutely amazing. And I can't recommend you guys go watch it enough yourself. There you guys go. Um, this was a very long episode today, but I hope that you guys enjoyed it. And. Um, yeah, if you guys want me to, uh, if you guys enjoy this and you guys want me to do a discussion about um, walking with dinosaurs next and uh, do a review on that, then please leave comments down below and uh, tell me to do that. And also, if you have any other suggestions for anything to do on the show, then please let me know. And without further ado, you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Oh boy. <laughs>